modular gun building game Devlog 2. I'm going to be finding the best movement mechanics for my game. Oh, and I need to perform a heart transplant surgery on a dragon with chopsticks. Wait, what? Sorry, I mean make it multiplayer. So past me neglected his legs and only animated his upper body. Huh, kinda sounds like my gym routine. Anyway, so I animated walking, strafing, crouching, sliding, and a jumping animation. The animations ain't perfect, but um, uh, indie? Next up, I need to show the player's X rotation. So I created a script to alter the bone's rotations in late update, set it up, and had it working within an hour. And then another few hours later, it just looks slightly better because I spent way too long tweaking it. I then fixed an issue with not being able to reload multiple mags. So now you can attach multiple mags to one gun and novice players will be able to spray and pray. Maybe this was a bad idea. Anyway, I finally came up with a game name, Custom Fire. Cool right? Definitely came up with that myself. Also I updated my Steam page with some terrible game screenshots but Damn, that's a really good description. I also definitely wrote that myself. Anyway, hit wish this now guys. So now I had the movement and animations networked just using Netcode's components. But currently the player looks like he's sliding right into your mum's deep. This is because I need to change a few settings like the interpolation speed. But as far as I could tell there's no way to change these settings. Lucky for me, I've built my own networking solution before. So I gutted my old network animator and now I have a lot more control. And I coded the basics of the client prediction script so I can change the interpolation speed and now the player is no longer sliding into your mum's deer. As you can see here we have some targets I set up just to test the hit effects. And I decided it would be a great idea to make a script that I could attach to any object to give it a health bar. Yeah, sometimes I like to torture myself. So I then spent way too long coding the script to create, animate and control the position of the health bar. Ah, yay, reusable code. So after that I decided to take a little break from coding and recreate a bunch of his idle animations because the old ones just didn't look right. I then created a blood spatter effect, added a UI effect, networked player respawns, networked gunfire with no authentication that future me will have to deal with, and lastly added ragdolls. Oh, oh. Now for the movement mechanics. I initially added wall running and double jump into my game because I wanted to add another dimension to my gunfights, but despite it working in my other previous projects, it just doesn't fit this game. So I went through a list of movement mechanics and settled on wall climbing. So I coded a new wall climbing script and then spent twice as long animating it, but so far it feels like it fits the game and it adds another dimension to gunfights while not making gunfights too chaotic. Now, unless the player wants to end it all, <laughs> he needs a way to get down. So I could just let the player take zero full damage, or I could implement a new hidden game mechanic. So my idea is inspired from Zelda The Ocarina of Time, where you could completely negate full damage by performing a roll after landing. This is essentially what I added to my game, but instead of rolling, you have to slide. Also, I saw a lot of comments that didn't like my other hidden game mechanic of being able to cancel part of the reload animation, so I've bend it. Don't worry, I will occasionally listen to feedback. The last major task was to sync the gun parts over the network. There's probably a lot of simple ways to do this, but like I said before, sometimes I like to make my life hard. So I broke it down and figured that I need to store an array of balls for active and not active game objects, which could be represented with bits. And then I could convert these bits to a byte, but a byte only holds 8 bits, so I converted the array of bits into an integer instead, which has 4 bytes. So now, one integer syncs all the weapon parts. I then set up Unity Relay, added Start UI, and lastly added a kill feed that creates, animates, and moves the UI with only code. Yeah, let's just not talk about how long that took. So, I tested the game with my brother and I don't want to be vain, but I think the game is feeling pretty fun. Especially considering there's not even any audio yet, which will be a task in my next devlog, along with an official game map and a new mechanic for changing gun parts on the fly. So, subscribe to stay tuned, wish this my game, and thanks for watching.